Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my Yumidigi Bison review. So let's get started. Now I'd like to thank Yumidigi for being kind enough to send this phone out to me to cover here on the channel. All opinions expressed in this video though are completely my own. And in addition to that, I've done a ton of content in the past about a variety of other Yumidigi smartphones. So definitely take a look to learn more about those devices as well. But before I go over everything that there is to know about this phone, let's take a closer look to see what all comes included in the box. So here is the box the device does come in. You can see right here, Yumidigi. We'll open this up. We have a quick start guide. We have an 18 watt USB wall adapter and we have a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. Now here is the actual phone itself. And if you haven't noticed yet, the Yumidigi Bison is a rugged smartphone. So it's definitely built a bit stronger than many other devices out there. And it features an IP68 dust and water resistance rating, which means that it can go underwater in up to 1.5 meters for up to 30 minutes. And in addition to that, it features an IP69K rating. And what that means is that this phone can withstand steam. It can withstand high water pressure at up to 1,450 PSI. And it can withstand high water temperatures at up to 80 degrees Celsius, which is above 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely pretty impressive there. But with this phone, we're getting a pretty large 6.3 inch display. The display itself is LCD at 1080p. We're getting a PPI of 409 and we're getting a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio. Now the phone does come with a thin plastic screen protector pre-installed. I have left that on, but the display itself does feature Corning Gorilla Glass. Now, even though the display is LCD, I think it does look very nice. We get good colors all around and things definitely look nice and crisp and clear. Now up top here, we do have a water drop notch and in that notch is a 24 megapixel front facing camera. Now internally with the Yumidigi Bison, we're getting 128 gigabytes of storage and we're also getting micro SD card expansion. So definitely quite a bit of storage there. Now there's no wireless charging with the phone, but we do get a fingerprint sensor mounted on the side. Now this is kind of interesting. I've never really seen a fingerprint sensor on the left side of a phone, but it is over here. So it is a bit of an awkward placement. I suppose if you're holding the phone in two hands, then you'd use your left thumb on that fingerprint sensor. But the good news though, is that the fingerprint sensor itself is very accurate. Now on the back side of the device, we do have a quad camera setup. So there's a 48 megapixel main camera. We have a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera at 120 degrees. We have a five megapixel depth sensing camera and a five megapixel macro camera. Now we do get portrait mode with both the rear and front cameras, which is definitely nice. However, one thing to keep in mind is that video recording is only supported by the main camera. And then of course the front camera as well. So if you are wanting to take ultra wide angle videos here with the phone, you at least at the moment do not have that ability. Now video recording itself does max out at 1080p with both the front and rear cameras. So also keep that in mind. But here's how things look through the camera app. Then from here, we can switch over to the ultra wide angle camera and we're able to fit a lot more content into the frame here. Then we can also switch over to the macro camera as well. And then you're able to get very close up and have things be in nice detail. Then from here, we can switch around to the front facing camera and then we can do portrait mode as well to get those nice blurred out backgrounds. So I'm definitely a big fan of that. And there's also a special underwater camera mode which you can access by pressing this multi-function button on the side. And essentially what that does is that when you're in underwater camera mode, it's gonna prevent you from leaving this panel here. So that should make taking pictures underwater a bit easier. Now internally here with the phone, we're getting six gigabytes of RAM and we're getting the MediaTek Helio P60 processor. So a pretty decent amount of RAM and a pretty decent processor too, making this kind of a lower end mid-range phone. Now I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test here on the phone. I got a single core score of 298 and a multi-core score of 1408. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then comparing your scores to these scores to see the type of performance upgrade that you might get. And then finally, with this device, we're getting a very large 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery and we're getting 18 watt fast charging. Some other cool bonuses that we're getting with this phone include NFC. So this phone does support Google Pay. And then as I mentioned before, we have a customizable button on the right. And then also on the left here, we have another button 
which activates the walkie-talkie. I'm not too familiar with this service, but if you wanted to give it a try and then of course have a friend or a family member also get this service, then I suppose that you could use this phone as a walkie-talkie as well. And then the phone also features a barometer. But now that we've gone over the major specifications of the phone, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I already talked quite a bit about the front panel here. In general, we are getting a nice looking display with great colors and everything is very crisp and clear and good looking. Another cool thing about the display on this phone is that it does get very bright. Now taking a look at the left side of the phone, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card, fingerprint sensor, and then the walkie talkie button. Then on the right side of the phone, we have volume up, volume down, the power button, and then the multi-function button, which by default activates the underwater camera mode. Then on the top side of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then on the bottom of the phone, we have the microphone and USB-C port for charging and data transfer. Then taking a look at the back side of the phone, we have the camera module, we have Umidigi Bison branding here, we have the speaker, and then also a lanyard hook as well, which is a nice feature to have. So in general, I like the design of this phone. One of the things that I especially like about it is that even though it does feature quite a bit of additional padding and thicker plastics, to make it more durable, the phone itself still is decently light. I mean, it is heavier than many other phones that I've used in the past, but it's not so heavy that it's gonna be an inconvenience. Now, one of the things about this phone that I wasn't a huge fan of was the pre-installed launcher. Now, in the past, I've liked using Umidigi launchers, and if you don't know what a launcher is, it's essentially the home screen and then also the app drawer. But with the default launcher on this phone, there was no app drawer, and I couldn't really find a way to add one either. So it's either there and I can't find it, or it's not there, I'm not sure. But let me show you that default launcher right now, and I'll tell you what I mean. By the way, to change this, you have to go to the settings, and then type in home, and then you'll see right here, default home app. So I installed Nova Launcher, which you can get from the Google Play Store, and I'm definitely a big fan of that. But typically, if I like the default launcher, I do stick with that. But I'll go over to their default launcher right now, and this is pretty much how it looks. And you can see there's no app drawer or anything. It just adds all your apps, you know, on the screen. So I definitely like having an app drawer. That's one of my favorite features of Android anyway. I wish that it came with the phone by default, but again, if I try to add one, typically I would go to the search and type in either drawer or app drawer Oops, if I can type today. See, there's no app drawer, so there's no ability to add one. So the only way to get one is to change the launcher, which like I said, I did, and it's not really a big deal, but I know that the typical smartphone user out there doesn't really even know that they can even change this. So if Umidigi's watching this, I would definitely recommend bringing the app drawer back, or at least making it really easy to add one in. But now that I've gone over that, Let's take a closer look at the photo and video quality from the phone. It's been an interesting experience using the cameras on the Umidigi Bison. Selfie photos and front-facing video is surprisingly good, especially for a budget device. And in general, the quality is perfectly acceptable for a phone in this budget segment. Now the ultra wide angle camera does take pictures with a slightly gold tint, but I'm just grateful that we're even getting an ultra wide angle camera in the first place. Now the macro camera has been a decently good surprise as well because it can take pictures very close up and those close up pictures definitely look good enough that they cannot be replicated with the main camera. Now the main camera does take good looking pictures and I really can't ask for much more considering that this is a budget phone. Now as for the rear facing video, the quality itself is decent and I do appreciate that we do get autofocus in video mode but there's really barely any video stabilization. In addition, the microphone quality is definitely good enough, but the gain is very low. So I definitely recommend that Umidigi increases the gain with the microphone in video mode through a software update. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a 1080p front-facing test video using the Umidigi Bison. So let me know what you think of the quality of both the video and the audio quality from the video as well. Definitely curious to know what you think about that. But it is kind of towards the end of the day right now. And, you know, there is a bit of contrast from the areas that are 
brightened up by the sun and then the areas that are in the shade. So keep that in mind. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a 1080p rear video using the Umidigi Bison. We do have autofocus in video mode. And it looks like we're getting some pretty nice depth of field on this plant. Look at the links in the video description to learn more about the various items. But let's open up the box and see what we have. Now video content definitely does look good here on the phone. In addition to that, I'm actually very impressed with the speaker as well. Now we only have one speaker and it is on the back here. So unlike some other phones, we don't have audio that also comes out of the earpiece. So when I'm playing a video or listening to music to that, and I audio. cover up that speaker on the back, you can't hear anything at all, or at least barely anything. So again, not a deal breaker, not really even an issue too much. And I'm sure when making this phone water resistant and all of that, they didn't want to have too many speakers on the phone anyway. So in conclusion, is the Umidigi Bison a good phone to buy? And if so, who is it good for? Now the first thing I want to mention is that the major brands that are out there like Samsung and LG, Motorola, those companies really don't offer too many rugged phones. I believe Samsung has one rugged phone right now. I believe it's called the X cover. But the point is, is that if you do want a rugged phone, you are going to have to go with a brand that's a little bit lesser known like Umidigi. That's not a problem at all, but it is something that I do find to be a bit interesting. And in addition to that, there are not too many rugged phones that are as affordable as this one. Now to see the most up-to-date pricing, definitely take a look at the link in the video description as prices do change from time to time. But this is definitely a very affordable phone. In my opinion, the two biggest downsides with this device is that the fingerprint sensor is on the left side, whereas I would have preferred it to be on the right side, ideally, right where the power button is or maybe under it. Like if they put the fingerprint sensor right here, that would have been great. It would be a lot easier to access. And then the second thing that I wish was different was the home screen launcher, as I wish they gave us an app drawer by default, or at least made it really easy to add one. But again, I was able to fix that issue by downloading Nova Launcher. And in addition to Nova Launcher, there's a variety of other third-party launchers available as well on the Google Play Store. But as far as performance goes, that's great. The display looks really good too. And the general design of the phone is also pretty nice as well. Again, I do like that the phone is not too heavy, and it's also not too bulky either, despite it being a rugged phone. But I hope you found this review of the Umidigi Bison to be helpful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one.